Good morning, everyone. Let's give us a few minutes and then we'll start. Participants are coming up. Let's wait. Let's wait a little bit and then we can start. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Sustainable Talks with NNN and Linia Pelde. Today, we will speak about sustainable management of raw material. We will speak about traceability, animal welfare, and the key ethical issues within the supply chain. We have a special guest, Rafael, Rafael Andrade. We have Maurizia Conto, and we have Sabrina Frontini. We will go over many topics today. It's gonna to be very interesting to learn about the supply chain, the traceability and the animal welfare. Some housekeeping rules for everyone. If you have questions, please ask all your questions in the Q&A section. We will read them during the uh, webinar and then also we will answer them. If we don't have time, because the conversation is going to be too long, we will answer separately. Thanks so much, and please ask questions. So, Maritia, I would like to introduce yourself first. Thank so, you. Maritia, yeah, good morning, Maritia. Maritia Conto has a degree in political economics from Bocconi University, and uh, she works in Munich since 2003, and she's running the economic department. She is a our main relator tonight, and, uh, and now we want to introduce Sabrina. Yes, Sabrina is the director of uh, ECHEC, is the certification body that uh, serve all the leather uh, industry. So is an auditor qualified to inspect all the management system for quality, product, process, uh, as well as uh, raw material origin and traceability. And as all of us, uh, she's uh, passionate about leather. Hi, Sabrina. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And then from Brazil, uh, we have our friend Rafael Andrade. Rafael is a corporate engagement and, uh, at NWF, National Wildlife Federation. And uh, he's also really passionate about leather, as is his work since he's uh, 17 uh, years old. He's working on several initiatives and cross-cultural collaboration uh, projects and uh, is leading a global project of development of tanning industry, uh, agricultural commodities and deforestation that we all know it's a very uh, sensitive topic in the leather industry. And actually, we would like to start with you, Rafael, for a general question. We always make this question to everybody to all our guests and all our friends, because every time we get a different answer, you know, we get always something new. So we want to ask you, Rafael, what is uh, for you sustainability in your daily life? Well, that's a very complex question and there's so many possibilities that we can tackle, but thank you, uh, uh, everyone. Thank you, Yunich. Thank you, Icek. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Um, on our daily lives is, um, always looking for ways to improve and, and, and to be better. That, that means for the community we're, we're in, for the companies that we're in, and for us as, as, as people. Um, and um, this is what is very interesting, very passionate about this job. We have a purpose. We can, uh, we can work with a purpose to, towards a, a green industry. And that's really passionate. And that's really what makes us uh, get together and collaborate with, uh, with everyone. So, basically that. The passion of your work, of the work, is a good part of the sustainability, is a good interpretation of the sustainability. When you do things with passion, of course, you put uh, the sustainable point of view in mind. No, Nico? This is, oh, sorry, I was muted. Yes, it's very important, sustainable, the sustainability, it's, it's, 
you know, is driving all of us, is driving our daily life, is driving our job. That's why we are all here. And uh, it's going to be amazing to listen what what we have to say today about traceability. So, Maurizia, yeah, what do we need? What do we need to know about leather traceability? Tell us. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's start with uh, with the presentation. And uh, so, as it was already said, topic for today is sustainable management of raw materials. So I would like to go back to our initial talk when we discussed the Italian tanneries approach to sustainability. Um, so in the next slide, I have. Uh, uh, represented uh, this one of the section of our sustainability report uh, where we uh, describe which are the main key elements of the ethical uh, of the ethical issues related with leather and we find again here the link with the united nations agenda 2030 um, the sustainable management of raw material has to do with one important objective, this, this one, number 15, life on land, that involves the promotion of uh, sustainable use of the ecosystems. So what all this means for our industry? And basically for the Italian tanning industry, this means uh, reaching a high level of control on the supply chain through the implementation of a traceability system. So let's have a look uh, in the next slide at the supply chain of leather, which can be represented in this way, uh, starting from the beginning, the farming of animals till the end where the leather is produced and is used to create these beautiful leather items and the beautiful fashionable uh, consumer goods that we all have, uh, have in mind. So um, you see that traceability uh, involves uh, um, so many operators, so many steps uh, here. So it's easy really to understand why every passage inside this uh, supply chain is crucial. Also because this is a simple representation and sometimes the supply chain can be also more fragmented and more articulated than it appears here. So first of all, we have to decide what information we need to collect, for example, the country of origin of heights and skins, some other, some more detailed information, or in which way we want to collect this information through documents, through other tools, or how far upstream we want to, to, to go, because we have, uh, we can have many intermediate operators. And let's think about, for example, uh, the, the traders that select raw materials in, in terms of, uh, of, of range of qualities. So uh, we can really have uh, so many details in the supply chain and the more fragmented it is, uh, the more we can have uh, uh, some, uh, some difficulties. So it's really, uh, we can see that uh, there are a lot of challenges. The first one is that there is no legal obligation to share the relevant information, except for the mixed sector, so that we can rely on the commercial document, on the sanitary certificate related to the, uh, to the meat uh, supply chain. Um, we can rely also on many private initiatives uh, that are more and more uh, implemented by tannery suppliers because we have uh, uh, we have sensibilized our suppliers that we need this information in order, uh, in order to guarantee to our clients certain aspects of our production. Nevertheless, it can be uh, really complicated to collect them uh, in a bottom-up approach because we are uh, producers of leather and we want to go upstream to the supply chain to collect uh, this information. So. Um, sometimes the need, the need of information can be uh, really, really, really deep and can be very, very challenging. But why mm -hmm. do we need all this information? Um, I think that the first, the first need. Maurizia, sorry, sorry yeah. to interrupt you because I yeah, think yeah. there was there is something interesting uh, you mentioned that really yeah. I would like to uh, pick it up. So you said there is, a, a, there is not obligation, there is some uh, government for the meat, uh, some, some rule yeah. government for the meat, but there is also private uh, association that do the traceability. So who is pushing more uh, to get this traceability? Is more government or is more the uh, private? I think that is more private. Uh, is, if we are talking about uh, the leather industry, uh, I think that uh, 
the, the most of initiatives come from uh, from the industry, from uh, the companies, from our clients, for our for the tan from the tanneries. So. Uh, as the relevant information are upstream in the supply chain, we are trying to let our supplier understand our need for this information. Um, as regards the government, the initiative is mostly related to, to what it has to do uh, with the safety of, of the food chain. So, for example, the traceability system of, of meat uh, answer to this need for control of, of the supply chain of human food let's say it's it's a safety matter okay great. Yeah. so the, the customer goes to the brand the brand goes to the tannery and the tannery goes goes back this is the, yeah, the, yeah. the motivation so we yeah, need it's to a motivate of... the customer <laughs> yeah it's a mix of of, of this uh, of these elements uh, of course uh, uh, the tanneries nowadays, specifically Italian tanneries, uh, understand very well the importance of having this information. So it is also an autonomous initiative, uh, not only driven by the by the by the customers. So um, this is really an effort that our industry is uh, is taking care of. So, and and the objective, of course, well, traceability is the tool, but the objective is to guarantee. Uh, some the respect of some important uh, ethical issues. So now we are going to the, the the hot topic that is animal animal welfare. So we want that uh, the hides and skins that we use in the production of leather are not coming from mistreated animals. So we want that good conditions of animal welfare are respected. So in the next slide, uh, I we I had uh, uh, here. I mentioned two milestones in the uh, animal welfare uh, definition, let's say. Uh, they date back to the mid 60s in the UK. So the first, uh, the first publication related to animal welfare was this Animal Machines written by Ruth Harrison, who was an activist and a writer. And she wanted to investigate in um, in this report the conditions of uh, of animals at the at the farming uh, at, at the farming specific, specifically poultry, and then uh, subsequently to the publication of this report came the Bramble report that was uh, uh, that was uh, commissioned by the UK government in order to understand the conditions of the uh, of the farming industry in the in the UK. And the result was the very first, uh, uh, let's say, formulation of an idea of animal welfare. So I quoted here uh, something coming from directly from the Bramble report. An animal should at least have sufficient freedom of movement to be able to turn around, the groom itself, get up, lie down and stretch its limbs. So this is, has to do really with the, with the everyday life of the animals. And in the, uh, in the next slide, we can see that uh, the, the development of these two publications are what we more or less all know, the five freedoms. So the more specific uh, consequence of, uh, of these two uh, publications were the definition of the five freedoms, the freedom from hunger and thirst. So the animals should have at least access to water and to a proper diet animals has to be free from discomfort so they have they really have to live in a comfortable place uh, they have to be free from pain from injury and disease and they have to be treated immediately in case of illnesses they have to be free to this to express their normal behavior so related to the species specific elements of their behavior and they have to be finally be free from fear and distress so with something that has to do with the mental condition also of the animals. These are the guiding principle of uh, what we can define is a comprehensive idea of, uh, of animal welfare. So these are really five principles that has to be translated into concrete acts. This is an happy animal, the definition to have an <laughs> happy animal, basically. No, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, sometimes we see- <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. A, in ideal terms, of course, these are basic principles, and the the the, the real uh, challenge is how to translate them into operations, into real life uh, uh, 
act uh, in 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 the industry in the in the farming industry. So yeah, because one point actually from from the animal welfare, and I'm reconnecting to the slide uh, before uh, Maurizia. I, I'm not sure if it's you or more Sabrina to do this question, but. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened so we mentioned the slaughterhouse before the slaughterhouse what has happened to the animal is it always raising and growing in the same place or or is it going around no you're right you're right because animals arrive at the slaughterhouse but they can arrive at the slaughterhouse from a farm that can be nearby can be also in another country so there is also an issue of transportation of the animals um, not only within the same country but sometimes also between different countries so uh, what happens before it has to do with the farming and also with the transport of uh, of the animals yeah and and sometimes uh, animals also uh, related to the farming uh, to, to, to to the life at the farm they don't stay the whole life in the same farm so they spend their life in different uh, in different locations sometimes yeah can happen it's a, it's a quite complicated issue and we yeah. also get a question on this topic i just i just uh, take it out from uh, vivian law which third party certification auditors are presently addressing animal welfare as defined in today's presentation uh, well, uh, I didn't uh, really consider the, the certification uh, in terms of animal welfare. This is not the complicated issue. There are lots of initiatives also on this side, but they are basically related to the meat sector. We will present, uh, and my colleague Sabrina will do it, uh, um, the efforts regarding the traceability system for the leather industry. So uh, all the, all the parts related to the uh, collection of the relevant information. So uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of uh, collecting every single piece of information. Okay, so our information relates to the leather industry and it is uh, strictly um, helped by the traceability systems and it can be uh, useful to be connected to other, uh, to other initiatives that can, uh, can add the, the remaining parts to the certification on animal welfare. There are a lot of initiatives also in this, uh, in this part. Cool, we will see later on then. Yeah, yeah, we, we will see later on. Thanks. Now let's go, uh, let's go on with the, with the presentation. And uh, um, I have mentioned the five freedoms uh, um, and the importance of uh, translating the five freedoms in concrete acts. I take the example of Europe. Uh, in the 70s, uh, Europe started with the uh, uh, first law uh, that defined the, some conditions in the slaughter uh, methods and then uh, defined in this important convention the, uh, the animal rights. And then in 2004, the first guidelines of the OIE, the um, World Organization for Animal Health, were published. So this is a, um, the evolution of this definition of animal welfare in principles. Mm, I started with Europe, but I can also mention that, for example, in the 60s and 70s, many other legislative initiatives take, uh, happened in the United States, for example, in Australia and in many other, other countries. Going on with the uh, European initiatives, uh, in the next slide, I tried to summarize uh, um, the situation of animal welfare legislation nowadays. We have, I, I started with Europe because it is a, a, a really comprehensive uh, legislation that takes uh, into, consider, into consideration all the relevant aspects that I mentioned that, that inspire the five freedoms. And we have uh, general rules regarding the farming life, uh, the transport of animals and the slaughter. So they cover all the life cycle of the animals. And then we have also specific legislation for some species of animals. The one I mentioned here, the protection of cows is related, strictly related also to uh, the, uh, the need for our industry. But it, in Europe, for, uh, for example, the need of safety of food, we have other examples. We have the pig uh, directive and, uh, and the poultry directive. Just because this is the initiative of the legislator in Europe to uh, answer to the need of guarantee uh, of, uh, of animal welfare. Um, going on in the next slide, and um, 
specifically referring to the initiative of the tanning industry, I can mention this very important project that we had with the uh, University of Milan. We collaborated for more than one year uh, with the Department of Veterinary Medicine of the University of Milan that has a team of researchers in the uh, animal welfare issue. And we tried to map the legislation around the world in terms of animal welfare and to describe the main aspects of uh, uh, the, the situation of uh, the respect of this principle in the world. The conclusion that we had after this collaboration, I mean, the next slide we can see it, um, we, we, have mapped, uh, we have mapped the legislation across the main, uh, uh, the main markets. Next slide, please. Okay, so here we can see the map of the, of the main supplies of, uh, of the tanning industry and we have tried to assess the situation in terms of legislation and respect of those, of those principles regarding farming, transport and slaughter. And we have seen that uh, as regards the supply markets of Italian tanning industry we have a high level of guarantees in terms of, uh, of animal welfare. And uh, we also explored in the next slide another specific issue, the, the, the issue of farming system, because we have a lot of talks about uh, which is the best farming system, which is the best management of animals. Uh, and we have a lot of discussion between uh, intensive, uh, uh, intensive farming, extensive farming. So we try to really understand what is the situation. And a very important thing that we discovered, and it is important here to, to underline it because we have uh, um, sometimes uh, what, we, what we perceive from the people is that uh, they have certain ideas and uh, the reality is black or white. Here, the, the, important, the interesting thing that we discover is that uh, the intensive farming system can be very different depending on geographical areas, depending also from farm to farm basis elements. So the same intensive uh, farm can be different from another intensive farm in the same geographical area, or they can be different in different geographical areas. Uh, as well as the same, uh, the same, the same can, can be said for the semi-extensive and the extensive uh, systems. More, uh, we already mentioned it because uh, it came from uh, from uh, a question that you you asked me. Animals spend time in more than one management, or they move seasonally. Because, for example, in Italy, uh, sometimes animals spend their life in during one season in a place, and then in the colder season, they are moved to another place. So this is really something uh, that can that complicate the, uh, the, the situation. Uh, the important conclusion here is to, be, to, to say that all housing and management system in the farming has, have advantages and disadvantages in terms of animal welfare. So they can have positive aspects uh, in one side and negative aspects in one side. For, for any, any typology of, of farming. So this is really uh, something that we have to, to keep in mind. Again, um, I, want, I, want to, I want to interrupt you for one second. We have a question yeah. from Claudia Rondinelli, friend from New York. She's asking about regenerative farming. Do we have any definition for it? Okay, Was so- Regenerative farming taken in consideration? Uh, I expected the question on that. So regenerative farming, well, this is the, um, the classic classification of uh, farming system related to the productivity of, uh, of the animals. So intensive farming has to do with a certain level of productivity. Extensive farming normally refers to pasture pasture farming and semi-extensive uh, combines different aspects of both. Um, regenerative farming is a completely, well, it's, uh, it's more related to uh, environmental aspects. It's more related to the way, for example, pasture are organized and the management of animals living in one area uh, is organized. The objective here is the 
um, minimization of, of the environmental impact and also the, uh, for example, the um, com combating the, the destruction of soil. This is what regenerative farming is. This classification that I mentioned here in this slide is related more to uh, how many animals you have and how it is managed the production that can be of meat or, or milk, for example. So it's it's kind of a cross uh, cross section uh, uh, definition. Okay, so it's not another classification. It's something about one of those systems, but it has to do more with the environmental impact than. So it can the... be semi extensive, but could be regenerative at the yeah. same time. Yeah, okay. Yes. Thanks. So I will, if there are no other question that we want to 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 answer now please, i please go ahead i go ahead and i conclude uh, mentioning uh, some other initiatives um, in the next slide i can i can mention this very important project in which we are participating it is a project related to uh, traceability and transparency in the of the value chain in the garment and footwear industry it is a multi-stakeholder project led by the um, United Nations Economic Operation Agency. So it's a really a, a very ambitious project that involves many, many, um, many operators, uh, many stakeholders in the supply chain. And the aim is defining a, a shared model of uh, traceability. Now, I think that my colleague Sabrina will uh, will describe it uh, uh, a little more in her presentation, but uh, this project has come to a very important phase. They are defining the pilot project for leather, so it is really an important initiative in order to um, to reach the objective that we uh, mentioned at the at the beginning of my my presentations. So having uh, reaching a sustainable management of raw materials through a control in the supply chain. And then the conclusion uh, of my presentation is um, to refer in the next slide with another important project, uh, another initiative uh, that uh, uh, is related to another ethical, important ethical aspect uh, regarding uh, the leather industry. So the DCF leather project, um, the deforestation and conversion free leather project, it it is a, a collaboration uh, between UNICH, ECHEC, and NWF. So our special guest will uh, will uh, will explore all these uh, all these uh, elements. And uh, the aim is to guarantee that uh, leather is not coming from uh, uh, deforested areas. So these are the mm, let's say the initiatives of uh, the sector in order to guarantee ethical sourcing of, uh, of raw material. So now I leave, the Maurice, floor. Yeah. I leave the floor to, to the next speakers. Thank you for the attention and I'm here for the questions. Yes. Thanks, thanks, Maurizia, and we will go. Uh, we will go later to Rafael, but first uh, we want to go to um, to Sabrina to see what what Ichek is doing to trace uh, to guarantee the traceability of of the leather. Thank right? you, thank you, thank you very much, and hello everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to show in what way we work on the traceability topic. I've been doing this job for, for 20 years, so I hope that uh, this presentation will help you to understand uh, how a voluntary certification can give guarantees on traceability topics. Uh, let me say two words to introduce ICEC. ICEC is the Quality Certification Institute uh, that works worldwide and uh, only in the leather sector. We have 20 years of activities and we work under accreditation to guarantee competence, impartiality and no conflicts of interest. Uh, we release a voluntary certification and uh, um, this means uh, of third type. This means that uh, first there is no obligation to do our certification. We are independent from the company which is uh, audited and we ensure the confidentiality of the data. This is very, very, very important because many of the traceability information are sensitive from a commercial point of view. So it is very important to, to work in this way. Next slide, please. Um, 
more or less uh, 10 years ago, tanneries uh, had the first request uh, from the brands to have information about the traceability of the ladders. Uh, they wanted to know, for example, the countries of slaughtering and farming of the animals, but uh, the tanneries started to collect it, this, uh, this data. Many of them uh, did a self-declaration and there was no international standard to be applied. So in 2012, uh, LICEC created the two LICEC uh, Technical uh, Traceability Specification, TS, to certify the traceability of the ladders. And I remember that it's a product certification, so we analyze uh, ladders and their origin. Next slide. For uh, companies producing uh, or selling finished or semi-finished ladder, we have two different choices of traceability system. We have each TS410, which is uh, applicable to an extended system of ladders, or each TS412, which is more uh, specific for individual ladder, for example, with specific origin. And uh, in this kind of audit, uh, it's included also the traceability inside the tannery. Both of these schemes are uh, effective. The choice depends uh, on the needs of the tannery or of the customers. And until now, we released 75 certification of traceability according to these two schemes and about 20 are ongoing. So more or less 100 uh, certification of traceability, really a great result. Not only in Italy, mm, we also released this certification in uh, Europe and in uh, extra European uh, countries. If you want to know the names uh, of these tanneries and their products certified, you have to check our database in our website. And in this slide, you can also see the logo that we release uh, for the certified products. Next slide, please. I would like to underline uh, some uh, key points. I remember that the origin of the ladder means uh, where the slaughter takes place. So where the hides or skins are generated. And these schemes can be applied to organization of any size, regardless of what production stages they undertake. For example, they can produce wet blue or finished leather. They can be traders. Uh, there is no difference. So all these schemes are applicable to all of them. The certification is applicable to all types of leather. And when we do the audit in the analysis, we cannot admit exclusions of batches or of period of time because we have to map everything. Everything happens. Next slide, please. Another key point, very important. It's not a purpose of this each TS specification to establish blacklist of the countries of origin of the raw material. So we don't want to give opinions on the worst or on the best countries of origin. Uh, the aim of this certification is to provide a reliable certification matched with a rating to show the degree of knowledge and control that the tannery have on what they purchase from the supply chain. Uh, so it's very important. We don't do blacklist but we are going to do some developments. In fact, we will have integration with, uh, and with animal welfare issues. It's an ongoing project, or we have already completed the DCFL project with our partner NWF for deforestation issues. So um, you can imagine that we are always improving our scheme of certification. Next slide, please. The structure of this uh, certification includes uh, the assessment uh, to some management system requirements, is very important, the legislative compliance, plus the collection of many data related to traceability that we try to collect through, through an Excel map, which provides uh, a final rating. Next slide, please. This rating is uh, calculated through the mapping of this data related to 12 months of purchase order of the ladder. And so the company has to collect the data uh, related to nation and places of slaughtering and farming of animals. And every information shall be documented. We don't accept uh, self-declaration. The audit is annual and it lasts more or less one day. Next slide. Here I will uh, show you an example of the Excel map, which provides uh, in a mathematical way a weighted final rating. 
this is only an example, only a facsimile of what happens uh, about the way of collecting the data. Next slide, please. Yeah, Sabrina, sorry, one question here. We see all the percentage, no? Uh, if we go back to the previous slide, we see all the percentage, but how can we make sure that there is the actual quantity uh, purchase? Because yeah, percentage can be, yeah, how do you uh, verify that? We, 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 during, during the audit, uh, we have to map everything happens in 12 months of purchasing order. And when we do the audit, uh, for sure, we also uh, check with the purchase office uh, uh, all the documentation related uh, to the collection of this uh, data. So uh, you have to imagine that we have one day of audit uh, and during this uh, one day of audit, uh, we can check uh, every line uh, and uh, we can see if uh, it is uh, completed uh, uh, related to the 12 months of time that we have to analyze. This is the map that the company uh, fill in before our audit. So is a, a work of the, phone, the of the company to um, to fill this map, and when we do the audit, we check, uh, uh, temp we sample the lines, and we see if the information inside are documented uh, or, or not. And are usually are the tannery. Uh, uh, um... How do you say, do they give uh, the right information or you have to run behind them sometimes to, 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 uh, to say, uh, no, this is not right, you know, for instance? Absolutely. If they don't give uh, right information, they lose uh, some points. So it's not a good idea to, to fill uh, inside the map uh, uh, wrong information. Uh, they know that they are under, certific under certification. We check the information. If we don't find documents, if we don't, if we don't find uh, the information that they declare, we, uh, they lose points. So you have to imagine that you have uh, a rating from zero to 100 points. And if you continue losing points because your information are, are not real, you can have negative rating. So it's not a good uh, way to, to do this kind of certification. Hey Sabrina, one more question that is coming from our uh, Q&A section. Uh, Adela is asking us, what about, how can we ensure that the leather that we buy from an Italian tannery come from a regenerative source or animal friendly source? Do we have any specification in the, in the ice, ice existence? In this uh, moment, no. Uh, we, as I told before, uh, we only do a final rating related to the fact that we have some information and uh, the rating is related to the, to the quantity and the quality of this data. In the future, we probably we will integrate uh, our certification with consideration related to animal welfare or other kinds of issues. Uh, but now we don't do this kind of uh, analysis because we have only a rating related to the information, but as I told before, we don't do blacklist and we don't give information related to the fact that the farmers or the slaughter the were done in a particular way. Yeah, I think also regenerative is something very new, but. Uh... Uh, likely we will have more instrument uh, in the future, uh, Sabrina. Absolute, absolutely, because there is, not, on that. There, is uh, the, there are a lot of topics, uh, as Maurizio told before, related to the farming, the intensive, the extensive, the way of slaughtering the animals, the way of transporting them. So it's a very complex topic. Uh, now the rating is not related to this kind of, of aspect. Okay, we okay. can go ahead because we look okay. forward to talk to, to Rafael. Uh, Thank also. you. Only one or two slides and I've finished. Uh, when uh, we deal with traceability, we have uh, different kinds of letters and situation. Uh, for example, if we have to trace uh, animals that are captive and ranched, is different uh, from the traceability when we try to uh, have information about, about wild species. And um, we have different situation when we try to map uh, split ladders. Or another situation is when we try uh, to, to have traceability related to Brazilian or South America origins. So uh, to 
be precise in every situation of these. We uh, collect uh, in an accurate way the data in different kinds of uh, Excel maps. So we have different variants of the Excel maps to collect in the right way all these uh, uh, different kinds of uh, ladders and animals. Next slide. The final rating in the certificate uh, is uh, summarized in this uh, slide. We can have a rating uh, from 30 to 100 points. And uh, higher the rating, the bigger is the quantity and quality of the traceability data related to those ladders under, uh, under certification. You can see in the table the level and assessment of the, of the final rating. And I remember that the final rating depends a lot on the capability of the supply chain to have to release and to share the documented information. And what the journalists try to do now is a bottom up traceability. And this is the reason why it's not a, a simple work. This is a traceability that we are trying to build bottom up. So starting from the finished ladder, we try to rebuild the upstream traceability. It's not a, a simple work. Next slide. So at the end of my speech, I would like to introduce uh, the topic of uh, deforestation. And so to leave Rafael uh, to explain better than me the situation in Brazil, uh, I can say that uh, even if <laughs> this problem of deforestation are mainly related to food industry, when we deal with the South America origin uh, ladder, we could have uh, deforestation problem. And so we have to manage this, this problem. We had a collaboration with NWF, the National Wildlife Federation, and we created uh, uh, this kind of certification, uh, DCFL, which means deforestation and conversion free ladder certification. It's based on uh, the PS 410 and 12. It requires to collect additional data and to join the DCFL policies with this certification. We manage the risk of the tannery that buys from a supply chain including direct and indirect farmers related to deforestation. Uh, now we have uh, released uh, three certification, but uh, I, I will uh, leave the floor to, to Rafael to explain uh, in, a, in a better way our collaboration and how uh, this, uh, this collaboration works. Hey, hey Sabrina, you, Sabrina, before you go, hi, sorry guys, Sarah. We have a, Sabrina, we have a, a question from Sarah from New York City. And she's asking how many years will it take to reach the goal of tracking all the animal and the animal welfare in, in order to uh, inform the consumer? Uh, it's a good question, but uh, I don't know if I have uh, the right answer because how many years depend on how much the supply chain will uh, go on working on this topic. And for sure, the supply chain will have improvements uh, in this. But as I told before, it's a very critical topic. Uh, we are trying now to do a bottom-up uh, traceability, but we need uh, to do a top-down to top traceability in the future. Because uh, even if now we are trying to do this in a documental way, it's very important for also to have uh, physical traceability of the ladder. And in this situation, uh, the meat industry shall help us have information. So at the end, in how many years will be at uh, the highest level of traceability depend on, uh, on the supply chain. For sure, uh, all of us are working on this topic. And so I hope that uh, in a few years, we will improve our uh, actual rating, our actual uh, situation. But uh, remember also that uh, uh, the situation depend on depend on different kinds of animals. Not all the origin are the same. So different countries have different criticism. So it's not uh, uh, not all the countries are in the same uh, position to give us uh, information uh, and quick. Thank you, Sabrina. And I want to add the the last the last part. You know, just to be clear with everyone, even with the meat industry we don't have a clear international rules where we need to specify the country of origin so uh, what the leather industry is doing right now is is going 
way more towards sustainability and traceability than the meat industry is doing. Uh, in Europe, for example, meat, if it's raw meat, you need to express the CEO, but if it's uh, uh, like not a raw meat, you, you can avoid to explain the CEO in the package. So I think what ECHEC is doing and the leather industry is doing, it's, uh, it's a great step forward. But now we want to leave the, uh, to speak to Rafa with his presentation. Thank you, Rafa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, what we believe is that this type of action uh, is the most effective way um, to achieve zero deforestation when supplying, when purchasing letters uh, from Brazilian origin. And what the Italian tenors are, are doing, the, the ECHAC is doing, taking the leadership on that, um, uh, on the stakeholders, uh, you, you can get visibility and better understanding of the supply chain. So you can offer that uh, to all of your uh, tenors. This is the, the, the best and the only way forward. Um, I do have a few slides. I'll try to be quick. Uh, let me know if I'm, I'm taking a lot of time, but um, just a quick overview uh, about NWF. That um, NWF is National Wildlife Federation. We are a uh, United States-based uh, NGO conservation organization uh, with over 6 million uh, members and supporters. And under the many projects that NWF have, we have the international uh, team. I am based in Brazil. And uh, the international program um, uh, works towards uh, advancing market-based solutions and public policies uh, to promote zero deforestation. And uh, with the, the leather industry, NWF uh, offers guidance and, and uh, specific points, and points to increase transparency within uh, the supply chain and working in a collaborative way with all the stakeholders. Um, uh, just a quick overview on the Amazon, because uh, so you can understand a little bit of the differences. Uh, uh, the Amazon is a jungle larger than Western Europe and uh, crucial for uh, nature uh, protection against climate change. The Amazon biome is the world's largest rainforest, uh, and 60% of it is based in Brazil, 30% in Peru, and 10% in Colombia. Um, that equals to about 3.52 uh, square million, uh, million uh, square kilometers of native forest, which is the largest uh, remaining rainforest of the planet, planet. That's about 15 European countries combined. Um, but usually when we talk about Brazil, we talk about the legal Amazon, uh, uh, which is of course Brazil's largest rainforest with uh, over 30 million inhabitants and 80 million heads of cattle in this area. So you can understand these differences. Um, there's the Amazon biome, which combines nine countries. And then we have the legal Amazon, uh, which combines nine states inside Brazil. Usually when we talk about uh, the Amazon, we're talking about the legal Amazon. And there is the Amazon Amazonas state, as we call it here, Brazil, which is only one state as you can see in red in the map. Um, so uh, talking about deforestation, uh, one of the most important products derived uh, from cattle is leather. And on average, Brazil exports 80% uh, uh, of its production. So the exposure to deforestation is embedded in the supply chain of cow hides originated from Brazilian origin. Um, a little bit of very actual figures for you to understand when we're talking about deforestation. The highest rate we had was in 2004. And after that, in uh, 2012, uh, if you look at the map, uh, we had an unprecedented feat where we could reduce 84% uh, of the, the rates in, in deforestation in the Amazon uh, compared to the historical peak of, of uh, 2004. So this achievement resulted from multiple government initiatives and also because of international pressure, of course. But unfortunately, that trend is no longer a reality. As we can see, uh, since 2013, there's been an increase uh, rates on the deforestation. And in 2020, the deforestation had an increase of uh, 47%. 
and 9.5% compared to 2018 and 19 respectively. Um, and now we are in the highest rate in the decade. What leads us to the fires in the Amazon? We have deforestation and we have the fires. Um, after the intense fires, the Amazon uh, captured the global attention in 2019. Um, the fires again reached a peak in 2020 um, and was actually more severe uh, by some key measures. Um, deforestation uh, fires are, are part of a, a multi-step process that converts this tropical rainforest um, to ranching and farming, right? Um, so multiple fires uh, are needed to complete uh, this process. Um, as you can see, this, um, this graphic puts on uh, basically the same with the deforestation rates that we have with the peak in 2004 and the peak in again in 2020. Um, some key takeaways from that uh, is that fire happens every year and driven mostly by agriculture. And deforestation is in a 10 year high. And cattle ranching is the biggest driver followed by soy. The way we see it, and as very well put by uh, Sabrina and Mauricia, um, uh, the, uh, I mean, the most effective way and valuable contribution um, uh, companies in the value ladder uh, chain can make uh, is to ensure the due diligence and understanding where possible uh, how to lead to decoupling this uh, deforestation from leather production. And what does that mean? That means that we need to have supply chain governance, uh, robust monitoring, so that we can have the deforestation talk about. Uh, through a lot of uh, uh, talk and understanding of the needs of the tenneries, understanding of the market, and, and with our program, uh, we came to a collaboration with uh, ECheck and Unich. Um, to have a supply chain risk assessment. Uh, in, uh, it's a collaboration with the University of Wisconsin, National Wildlife Federation, and of course, UNICH and ECHEC. Um, uh, this leadership uh, brings this assurances for um, the certification. This is a quick overview when we were talking about uh, the production uh, workflow of cattle in Brazil. We do have uh, partial cycle ranchers uh, and we do have full circle ranches. Um, the, the tier two indirect suppliers that can be, uh, comes from the breeding and then you have the indirect suppliers with the rearing and the fattening, which are the direct suppliers that provide um, leather and, and meat to the meat packer. What we do, uh, what is now the meat packer? Uh, the meat packers have current capabilities of monitoring the systems uh, of the direct suppliers. So we're talking about 41% uh, of the deforestation areas covered on their direct suppliers for the meat packers. What we do is that we extend this, uh, this view of the supply chain up to the tier one indirect suppliers. And we're talking about 48% of the deforestation. So when we bring the, those two together, we're talking about 89% of visibility of deforestation in the Amazon biome. So this is what uh, we can do and we are act actively uh, doing with uh, the Italian tenders. Um, this, uh, we work with uh, a public uh, databases. Uh, one is the GTA with the animal transit guy, guide. Uh, and we have the car, which is the property uh, data set. And we have the federal sanitary inspection numbers for the meat packers. These numbers do not change uh, even if you change ownership. So what we do, um, we uh, correlate all these numbers, understanding uh, with the help and, and the data and the documentation provided by, by the tenneries, we can have full visibility of the supply chain. So Rafa, um, uh, just yes. to go a little bit deeper on this point, you mean like uh, it happened that the cows goes around in different uh, range? And, and uh, but that's the, the problem sometimes, no? Because if you want to trace before the slaughterhouse, it's uh, a bit easier the last step, but the step before are the one that are more difficult to, to trace because if a cow moves three different ranches, then 
how do we make sure that uh, we know exactly where it lives? Exactly, exactly. So what we do have in place now, uh, meatpackers can and have um, current abilities to look up to their direct suppliers, but we need to uh, look it uh, up to the birth farm. And it's very complicated because of these transits. Um, and let me go back a few slides. If you have the, uh, the breeding farm, it can up, uh, transit uh, many times uh, since their birth, uh, the animal. So you need to be able to trace back where this cattle moves and comes from. And one way to do it is using this uh, animal transit guides that we have in the other uh, slide. We do have the animal transit guides, which is an obligation here in Brazil that every time you transport an animal, you need to issue an animal transit guide. Uh, and then uh, it is combined with all the data from the farms that are from the property data set from CAR and with the data from uh, the meat packers. This way we can triangulate uh, uh, and, and find out uh, where this uh, cattle came from. So it's a very complex uh, system here in Brazil, but we believe this is the, um, the way forward, uh, trying to uh, having the, the full visibility of the supply chain. Um, a little bit of you understanding where do we work uh, when we're, uh, you know, using the data that comes from Italian tanneries. The coverage area of the study is from the Ligo Amazon, uh, mostly from the states of Pará, Rondonia, and Mato Grosso uh, in this red uh, orange area. The data source uh, is an official data source from PRODIS, which is the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research and Studies, uh, which is satellite monitoring, basically. And then we can, we can also trace back uh, and understand where these areas of deforestation come from. And also sources uh, from uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and also uh, IBAMA, which is the Brazilian Institute uh, for Environmental and Renewable uh, Natural Resources. And the analysis tool uh, that we use is Fisipac, which was developed uh, with the University of Wisconsin uh, in medicine. and. Um, that we can uh, do all this uh, understanding and full visibility of the, um, um, of the supply chain. And what we are able to offer when we uh, have the full visibility and analysis of uh, the tanneries is that we can understand the purchase uh, volume analysis of the tannery, uh, the deforestation area that we have per biome, uh, the deforestation area that we have per company, all the protected air, if, uh, someone is buying from regions of protected areas or from embargoed areas, which is um, uh, farms that should not be, uh, you know, uh, selling and, and transiting, uh, making the transit of uh, cattle at that time. So we can run this analysis and understand and visibility on the supply chain so that uh, the, the companies and the tenors can work on their supply chain. Um, our recommendations is, uh, as it is very complex and we do not have a, a single way of verification for every cattle is that this due diligence checks uh, need to cover at least uh, tier one indirect supply ranches. And um, we, we need when we ask uh, for, uh, for the companies, the slaughterhouse's name is locations and the SIP numbers and the catchment area for sourcing the cattle, where this cattle comes from, right? And uh, procedures to check the farms not included on bombing embargo lists and require uh, all the property boundary maps for the supplying farms, explanation uh, of the activities uh, uh, to expand and the due diligence check uh, on the supply, mo play, uh, supply chain monitoring, which can be very uh, uh, difficult to achieve, but the meat packers are working and uh, most of them already have very good and strong um, monitoring policies and, and systems in place right now. And sourcing material from tenneries that have scored high on their traceability order. Um, basically, um, a little bit of uh, my presentation is that, and I'm able to questions with you. Great. Thank you so much. This was Rafael. very interesting, Rafael. Very, very interesting, and thank you so much for this presentation. It looked like that the industry is doing a lot to make sure that the leather that tanneries are using and custom, final customers are using are not coming from the Amazon. But how do you, you know, we have a lot of 
I don't want I want to say scandal so like some backlash on this how do you uh, define these problems that we have here and there on the supply chain well um, when we look at the you know the data from past years we can see that we had prob much more problems uh, in the year in the 2000s and we did found find ways of improving uh, in 2012. We do believe that uh, the industry have to come together to, to work for it. And the leadership of the leather industry is remarkable uh, because we, the way we see it, um, it's, it's a reasonable expectation from the meat packers uh, so that they can have all this visibility and, and the, all, all this process with the supplier chain. So it's not anything uh, unreasonable. And we're, we're using the, the most available, the best available data so that we can find that. It, it is a joint effort from the from the whole industry and, and the leadership that the leather industry is taking in. And this is very, uh, it's very good. It's remarkable. Uh, as we say, we work on a pre-competitive way so that we can have, the, our final goal is to, you know, uh, the, uh, the station free leather. The last comment that I have, you know, everybody's speaking nowadays on blockchain and how blockchain can help all these process. How do you, how do you approach blockchain technologies? Well, uh, there are many um, small, uh, I mean, when you consider all the, uh, all the cattle herd that we have in Brazil, the big cattle herd and all the difficulties that we have, uh, it, it's kind of difficult to, uh, have a system or put everything uh, trace back. I believe it will be, and it's very important right now um, um, to have uh, programs and start with this program so that we can have better and, and more accurate visibility uh, for every animal. But when we're talking about a, the, the whole uh, cattle herd in Brazil, we have more cattle than we have people in Brazil. So with all the difficulties, yes. So uh, with all the difficulties that we have, how are we gonna trace back, right? How are we gonna do all this? understanding this is the best way forward and uh, this is how we perceive that that should be uh, the best way forward yeah maybe sabrina you want to add uh, something on the on the blockchain from yes, the uh, would, check point of view i would add that uh, uh, in the unature project uh, related uh, in a specific way to traceability there will be a group uh, working in the near future on the blockchain. So uh, we'll keep you updated because uh, it's a very good uh, project, uh, which is involving all the stakeholders, all the tanneries, brands. And so we, I hope that uh, with this kind uh, of project, uh, we will solve the problem of having uh, information top to down a stream and uh, uh, having them also with a confidentiality that the, the, all the companies want to keep uh, during this kind of process. Because uh, I never stop to remember that many of the information of the, uh, related to the traceability are sensitive from a commercial point of view. So it's not only a problem uh, to have them, uh, but for also to keep them uh, to, to to, to try to use them uh, in a confidential uh, way. So just a quick, I, yeah, I just hope, a quick yeah. recap. Yeah, yeah, uh, with sure. that, following that, Sabrina, sorry to interrupt you. Just a quick no, recap, no. recap for people to understand how we work. We do work with strict NDAs so that this confidential information is not uh, passed on. So th this is for the tenors to understand their supply chain visibility. So this is very important what Sabrina said. We do uh, and respect that a lot. So that's very, very good, very good point. Yeah, that's always a sensitive uh, point. I think the, the, the secrecy, the, sec the, the, the balance between the security of the information and the transparency that you want to have from the other end. And that's why I, I mentioned, we mentioned also other questions we have seen about blockchain because <laughs> then you want to use this as an instrument to, to do that traceability uh, visible. And actually we have, uh, uh, one uh, question from uh, Attila Okuman and uh, is what about, I mean, we spoke a lot about Brazil and now there is a, a spotlight on Brazil and probably is very, uh, is more safe than there than in other country. Now, what about uh, the traceability in uh, uh, other country, for example, in Europe, raw material from Europe? Um, 
what do you mean oh okay so if i well understand the question um the question uh, is related to the government initiatives is is this the question i i ask for the for the uh or the participant who asked me that. Um, if this is what I understand, there are lots of initiative also. Well, in in the in Euro in the European Union, there is there is a, a traceability system that works uh, at custom level. So inside the European Union, with the free circulation of goods, you can rely on documents, on commercial documents. While if Heights come from uh, third countries. You have the documents that uh, European Union requests to uh, to give the permission to the operators in the sector to uh, to to come into the to, into the territory of the United uh, uh, of the European Union. Similar initiatives are in place also, for example, in the United States and in uh, in, in Australia. So there is a, a general system of control for the traceability also always related to the meat uh, to the meat uh, to the meat sector so uh, what you were mentioning before nicola it was that the only way we have uh, if we refer to something mandatory is to rely on uh, the mandatory uh, documents for the meat sector that do not cover all the, the typology of meat Okay, so this is uh, this is as regards the traceability. Of course, uh, uh, if we want to know the country of origin of rawhides, uh, um, well, I am uh, speaking about all the. I am uh, giving a general answer to all the questions that I saw uh, from the participants in the chat. If we want to know the country of origin, if we want to know some additional information in terms of uh, animal welfare guarantees. Okay, we even if we do not have, for example, a specific uh, certification, even if we don't have a specific traceability system, we have uh, some way to give this information to the clients that request it. Okay, so it, it's not a, co a complete blank uh, blank sheet. So it's uh, it's really something that we can uh, deal with. Of course, we hope in the future to have a more uh, complete and specific tool to to standardize the solution. Okay, so this is why uh, certification are so important, as, as Sabrina said. Cool. And one one last question from the brand uh, point of view. We have seen the rating from uh, Sabrina before. Uh, the rating of the tannery that Ichek is going uh, is doing, and uh, we know more international uh, instrument like also like the working group rating and whatever. What are the main instrument that the brand and let's say also the final customer have to make sure that the leather is coming from uh, from a good source, let's say that had a good life and they respect the principle that Maurizia mentioned at the beginning. As I talked before, the certification can be the main instrument to give this kind of guarantees. Even if we don't do blacklist, we we do information, we give information to the tannery and to the brands. And through this information, they can do their risk assessment and they can decide if some kinds of origin are uh, the best or not, uh, depending on, uh, there is not only the problem, the problem of the origin, but uh, there are other kinds of uh, problem related to traceability because uh, you can check for deforestation, animal welfare, social issues. Uh, but for sure, the certification is one of this kind of instrument that can help uh, the market to have this kind of uh, guarantee. Not only traceability, if you speak about the sustainability topics, you can have many other kinds of certification. Uh, and uh, for sure, this kind of instrument are not for free, because I, I saw another question related to the fact, uh, the cost of all this system, how much it is, uh, you have to consider that uh, more or less uh, for uh, a tannery, uh, there is five, four percent of the annual turnover dedicated to sustainability. So for sure you have many kinds of instruments. In some, sometimes they are similar, sometimes they are different because uh, uh, you, you can have uh, each certification or other kind of platform working on this kind of topics. But um, the, 
this, the real uh, situation, the current situation is that uh, the brands don't accept any more self-declaration. So you have to, have to do something more than, uh, than this. Uh, and uh, the best uh, solution, in my opinion, uh, is uh, to run through a certification also because uh, uh, you can uh, protect, the, protect the confidentiality of your, uh, your data. Clear, yeah. clear. And uh, uh, just to confirm, Ijek is operating only on the Italian tannery, right? No, no, because oh, as okay. I told also, in my okay. presentation, we have released about traceability 100 certification, but not all of them in Italy. We have released also certification in Europe and extra European countries. Because there are many suppliers of brands, for example, in Spanish, in Turkey, in Tunisia, many other countries. And we did this kind of certification going there and uh, releasing our traceability certificates. So not only for Italian, for sure. Okay, Absolutely. okay. So we can put as a, as a kind of competitors of the leather working group as a kind of the same uh, uh, yes. scope, let's say. Absolutely. The uh, topics of the sustainability are always the same. Leather Working Group, eCheck, or many other kinds of platform. We, we, you have to deal with environment, with social issues, with health and safety issues, with traceability. So the topics are the same. So the same, you uh, only move in a different way to do the audit. So we have different kinds of work uh, to do the, the audit, uh, different kinds of protocol, different kinds of standard, but the, the final aim and the... the the topics the are same. the principle is the, the same, same. Of course. The same. As, as, as and, brand, this, and this creates also an overlap of control and so we can introduce the topic of the simplification but i don't want to take time now because in two weeks i will have my uh, certification webinar so i suppose that in that kind of webinar i will have time to explain all these questions related to certifications that's great. That's great. Thank you very much, okay. Sabrina. Our our aim as a as a brand. What's going on? As a brand. Okay. As a brand and customer point of view, we hope that there will be one certification tomorrow, and the 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 the, the, the rule of the different association can can be which can be like a working group all together can really go together and have one standard. And with this, I want to also conclude, uh, Nico, with the, introducing the next, uh, the next uh, webinar. That's going to be an interesting one. Yes, the next webinar will be very interesting, talking about exotics, traceability, and welfare. It's going to be next, th next Tuesday, and we will have great brands coming up. We will have the Louisiana government, the Swiss government, and then other, uh, and then Louis Vuitton, Richmond, and other brands. So it's going to be very interesting. Please follow us. And thank you, everyone, for the uh, attention today. And with this, we want to close it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.